Thank you for cruising by for my daily devotions. It's April the 17th. It's Wednesday, 2024. We're going to look at Romans chapter 12. Great chapter. We introduce a spiritual giftedness and that kind of thing in this chapter. And then we're going to look at Luke chapter 23, winding up with the gospel of Luke in the next uh, couple today and tomorrow. Psalm 104 and 1 Samuel chapter 20. The end of the 11th chapter of uh, Romans has a doxology, okay? It's kind of final words is what that means. In verses 33 through 36, though the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgment and his paths beyond tracing out. In other words, there are nobody like God in his wisdom, nobody, okay? Who has known the mind of the Lord and who has been his counselor? Rhetorical questions, the answer to which both of which is no one, okay? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? You, you can't give to God so that he has to repay you. He is the source of all things, okay? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. We need to live our lives in such a way that we offer the glory back to him by the way we live and the things we say and the things we do. The glory goes back to God. Let's pray and we'll jump into the word. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege of living it for you. Help us do that. I pray that you would address our lives. Speak to us, Father, in, in, in your word and crawl inside us with the truth we find there and change us from the inside out and write a new law in our hearts, Father, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Twelfth chapter of Romans. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Worship starts by surrendering your life, your body, to the Lord. That's where worship starts. It's, it's the way we live every day under surrender to the Lord. Wow. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's why you need to be in the Word all the time. Renew your mind so the Holy Spirit can work. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, that means speaking forth God's word. It can predict the future it can not, or not, but it's speaking forth God's word. Um, okay. Just as each of us has one body with many members, start verse 4 again. Members, all these members do not have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many... Uh, form one body and each member belongs to, other, uh, to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him te teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. That's big. That, that's how good things happen. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction. That's big, <laughs> patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's what we're supposed to do. Luke chapter 23. 
Tomorrow is Luke chapter 24. That's the last chapter in Luke. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. That's Jesus. There He's on trial. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of tax and taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ a king. Why? Because he was <laughs> Christ a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in, he started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, this Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time, He'd been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they'd been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, so he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice they cried, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for the, an insurrection in the city and for murder. Dude was a murderer. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time, he spoke to them, why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for death, for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with the shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, that's Barabbas, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to him, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if, if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. They came to the place called the Skull. There they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let's let him save himself if he's the Christ of God, the chosen one. Soldiers came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you're the, the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you're under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we're getting a four what our deeds demand deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. No kidding. Sinless for 33 years. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, three hours of darkness in the middle of the day. Okay. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness his, this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. 
But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision in action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had been laid. It happened to be his tomb. One of the other gospels says that. Yeah, it was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb where his body was laid. It saw the tomb, his body was laid, saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the command. Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundation. It can never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment the water stood above the mountains but at the re at your rebuke the waters fled at the sound of your thunder they took took to flight they flowed over the mountains they went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them you set a boundary they cannot cross never again will they cover the earth he springs he makes springs of water into the ravines it flows between the mountains he gives water to the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the air nest in the waters. Uh, the birds of the air nest in the waters and sing among the breaches, branches. The waters in the mountains from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine and wine that gladdens the heart of man. Oil to make his face shine. The bread that sustains his heart, the trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the pine trees. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the conies. The moon marks off the seasons. The sun knows where to go down. To bring darkness, it becomes, you bring darkness, it becomes night, and the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey. prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then man goes out to his work, his labor until evening. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the Leviathan which you formed to frolic there. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and, and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditations be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. And then, 1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20. Then David fled from Naoth to Ramah and went to Jonathan and asked, What have I done wrong? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to take my life? Never, Jonathan replied. Uh, 
you are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything great or small without confiding in me. Why would he hide this from me? It's not so. But David took, took an oath and said, your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said to himself, Jonathan must not know this or he will be grieved. Yet as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there's only one step between me and death. Jonathan, Jonathan said to David, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. So David said, look, tomorrow in the new, is the new moon festival and I'm supposed to dine with, your, with the king, but let me go and hide in the field until the evening of the day after tomorrow. If your father misses me at, at all, tell him. David earnestly asked my permission to hurry to Bethlehem, his hometown, because an annual sacrifice is being made there for his whole clan. If he says very well, then your servant is safe, but if he loses his temper, you can be sure that he is determined to harm me. As for you, show kindness to your servant, for you have brought him into a covenant with you before the Lord. If I am guilty, then kill me yourself. My hand will uh, why hand me over to your father. Never, Jonathan said, if I had the least inkling that my father was determined to harm you, wouldn't I tell you? David, David asked, who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? Come, Jonathan said, let's go out to the fields. So they went there together. Then Jonathan said to David, By the Lord, the God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time, the day after tomorrow. If he is favorably disposed toward you, I will not send, I will not send you word and let you know. Will I not send you word and let you know? But if my father is inclined to harm you, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I do not let you know and send you away safely. May the Lord be with you as you have been with my father. But show me unfailing kindness like that of the Lord as long as I live so that I may not be killed. And do not ever cut off your kindness from my family, not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan and David reaffirmed, reaffirmed then, and Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him because he loved him as he loved himself. Then Jonathan said to David, tomorrow is the new moon festival. You will be missed because your seat will be empty. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid when this trouble began and wait for the by the stone Ezel. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it as though I were shooting at a target. Then I will send a boy and say, go and find the arrows. If I say, look, the arrows are on the side of, of on, the, on this side of you, bring them here. Then come, because as surely as the Lord lives, you are safe and there is no danger. But if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you, then you must go because the Lord has sent you away. At about the, uh, and about the matter you and I discussed, remember the Lord is witness between you and me forever. So David hid in the field, and when the new moon festival came, the king sat down to eat. He sat in his customary place by the wall opposite Jonathan, and Abner sat next to Saul, and David's place was empty. Saul said nothing that day, for he thought something must have happened to David to make him ceremonially unclean. Surely he is unclean. But the next day, the second day of, of the month, David's place was empty again. Then Saul said to his John, son Jonathan, why hasn't the son of Jesse come to the meal either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered, David earnestly asked me for permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, let me go because our family is observing a sacrifice in the town and my brother has ordered me to be there. If I have found favor in your eyes, let me go away to see my brothers. That is why he has come to the king's, that is why he has not come to the king's table. Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan and he said to him, you son of a perverse and rebellious woman, don't, don't I know that you have sided with the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of the mother who bore you? As long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he must die. Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Jonathan asked his father. But Saul hurled his spear at him to kill him. Then Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger, on the second day of the month, he did not eat because he was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. In the morning, Jonathan went out to the field for his meeting with David. 
He had a small boy with him. He said to the boy, run and find the arrows I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrows had fallen, Jonathan called out to him, isn't the arrow beyond you? Then he shouted, hurry, go quickly, don't stop. The boy picked up the arrow and returned to his master. The boy knew nothing of all this. Only Jonathan and David knew. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said, go carry them back to town. When the boy, After the boy had gone, David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. Then they kissed each other and wept together, but David wept the most. Jonathan said to David, go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, the Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to town. The Lord has spoken. The uh, Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today. Change us, Father, by what we heard. Make us new because of you. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.